We'll now call this meeting of the Jackson City Council to order. Uh, I want to thank everyone who has come out tonight for the meeting, also those who will be watching on G10 television. Uh, first thing we're going to do tonight is the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Logan Sosa, followed by the invocation. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, we pause to give you thanks, to give you thanks for this beautiful day, for all the blessings and benefits that you so graciously bestow upon us individually and upon us as the city of Jacksonville. We give thanks and we pray for our new city manager and his family. We ask your guidance and direction for him as he comes now to live, to work, to serve with us as we serve our city and its citizens. We pray for our military who are serving us this evening around the world, many in dangerous, dangerous places. We pray for their anxious families. And as always, we ask that your direction and your guidance be with our mayor and with our council. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Recognize that we have our new city manager, Mr. Joshua Ray, present with us tonight. It's good to have you for your first meeting as city manager. Uh, council, you have before you an ad uh, agenda. Uh, most of you probably already read it. At this time, I would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Next, we have our first session of public comment for the evening. I have no one signed up, but if there's anyone present that uh, wanted to speak it didn't get a chance to sign up, please indicate by raising your hand. I see no one, so we're going to... Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Public hearing on that one matter. Okay. We'll get, you, we'll get to you on that shortly. Okay. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, we're going to move on to the adoption of the minutes from the September 6, 2022 workshop and also the uh, five consent items that's on the agenda. Motion. Make a motion to approve the minutes as well as the consent items. Second. Minutes, excuse me. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, Mr. Mayor, I do have a question. Um, this AV system for Jack Amiet? Uh huh. Okay. This organization is, it, is, it has a subsidiary in Eastern North Carolina? Yes, they're up in the Moorhead City area. They service all of our AV system, and this is for a compatibility issue. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're the reason we're being able to hear tonight. Okay. And, I was just, and be here, here I was just questioning it. Yes. Yeah, good with that? I'm good. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> who, somebody make a motion. On, there was we a, had a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay. Next, we have a public hearing, and this is as soon as I get to it. This is a zoning uh, issue here. This is a public hearing for zoning of a tract of land along Burgall Highway to uh, multi-residential, uh, multi-family, and high-density RMFHD. And Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item. Jeremy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. Again, agenda item six is a proposed zoning for a 22.25 acre tract of land located on Burgall Highway. As you may recall, the City Council annexed this property at its August 16th, 2022 meeting. Before you on the screen is aerial photography of the area. Notice that the parcels directly between the Blue Creek Elementary School and Southwest High School on Highway 53, Burgall Highway. Currently, this property is unzoned as it was annexed. We have not brought forth a zoning. Uh, it is surrounded in white on the screen by properties in Oslo County's zoning jurisdiction. Staff is proposing to, or via an application by Trask Land Co Company, 
who is requesting to zone the property residential multifamily high density. Notice that on the screen before you now. The Planning Advisory Board heard this request at their September 12th meeting, and they, along with staff, are recommending approval with findings of fact, A through J, being found in the affirmative if staff is directed to update the CAMA future land use map this property will be needed need to be added to the CAMA land use plan um, again this is a zoning only and staff believes this zoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities Lori Morris with Tidewater and Associates is here representing the applicant uh, she and staff will be happy to answer any questions that the council may have any count any questions of uh, Mr. Smith Okay, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. So this time I'll recess the regular council meeting and open up a public hearing that's required on this matter. Anyone present wishing to speak to this issue, uh, please indicate by raising your hand. It's this zoning track here. Mr. Pollard, if you'll come up, please, uh, to this podium here and give your uh, name and address to the clerk. Uh, thank you, Your Honor, members of the city council. My interest here tonight is uh, primary informational. Uh, I do have uh, a property that backs up to uh, this property that's in question. I also uh, own a Blue Creek Utilities, uh, and that is in my franchise area. I just uh, want to uh, really determine exactly what's going to happen out here, uh, how it's going to affect me as a property owner and also me as uh, the owner of a utility co a company. Uh, this uh, sanctioned and, uh, and I have the franchise from the North Carolina Utilities Commission. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm not sure exactly. I, I, I know they're going to do a multifamily uh, units. I, I mean, is the city going to furnish sure? Is the city going to furnish water? How's it going to impact my, my wastewater plant? You know, I've had this plant for about 40 years and it just uh, has started cash flow in, in the last few weeks. Anybody's ever used uh, owned a utility knows this. Most of them are not very profitable, so I'm just trying, and I still have capacity left. I'm just trying to uh, determine uh, how it would affect uh, uh, my utility plant more than anything else, and uh, if it would mean that my property would be included uh, uh, in, the, in, in, in the cities, uh, uh, I, I went in, in the ETJ or either in city limits, or, or, or more or less, of what exactly is going to be happening out there and how it will affect me. So if I could get some answers to those questions, I'd, I'd be uh, I'd be much obliged. Has anyone from staff spoke to you about this at all? No. Okay. So the questions, uh, number one, uh, Mr. Pollard, this does not affect your property at all. You're still, I, I don't believe you're in the ETJ or anything of that nature, and so it does not affect you at all. This property was annexed at the last meeting of city council, so it's in the city of Jacksonville now. The city of Jacksonville will be providing sewer service, and the city of Jacksonville will be providing either exclusively, and this has not been decided yet, or in conjunction with UNWASA, water service for this uh, project. And it will be an apartment complex is what's been uh, indicated to us. Well, my question is how can you do that in my franchise area? That's something I would have to research. I do not know. Uh, uh, we, we can certainly research that and get back uh, with you. Yeah, I've suffered with this plant for a lot of years to try, and uh, some of you may uh, remember Richard Coates, who used to be at the county sanitarium. He encouraged me to do this uh, about 35 years ago, and uh, it's, uh, this, this plant has uh, is, uh, caused me almost to go in bankruptcy several times because of, of like or customer base. Of course, Richard was of the idea of that once we built it, the county would buy it and it'd just be kind of a transition thing. Well, nobody's offered to buy it, unfortunately. If they could, they, they could have. But uh, uh, I, I just want to be sure that I'm not going to be competing uh, with, with the city of, of, of Jacksonville for sewer customers. Uh, unlike uh, municipalities and county governments and state governments, there's no grant money to, uh, for my type of operation. You either sink or swim. And I've, I've been swimming against the tide for a long time on this, and uh, it's, it, I don't think it's going to be in my best interest if, if I have competition, especially if it goes beyond just uh, this one project. 
Just you can meet Mr. With Hanson Mr. and I will uh, uh -huh. confer tomorrow and get up with DEQ or or whatever they're called now, and we will get back with Mr. Pollard and let okay. him know how we're able to serve that area, even though it's in his franchise. And the Trask uh, folks have never, con have never contacted me and asked me if they could get sewer because I'm right across the branch from them. And uh, it would be a, an easy, uh, a easy uh, thing for me to do. And I have capacity probably to handle a lot of what they're talking about. So, so if I understand you're going to do some more research on yes, it. Okay. We'll get back. Well, thank you very much for yes, your indulgence. Sir. And I'll be listening here from the council yes, as we to how we stand you, on this. Mr. Again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So this was uh, for rezoning. So again, like Mr. Carter said, this doesn't have impact on the actual zoning because it's already been annexed into the city. Uh, a motion is in order. Well, but, uh, uh, is he uh, I'm sorry. I guess I ought to do that, haven't I? Sure. Anyone else want to speak to this issue, by the way? Okay. With that, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, make sure you, you uh, I'll, I'll, do I'll, check on that. Okay? I'll get back to Mr. Pollard. Yes. And, uh, so now I will entertain the motion. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we uh, approve the rezoning request. Uh, based on findings of facts A through J being found in the affirmative if uh, the Camel land use map is, is updated and uh, I believe this zoning advances the public interest by creating more development opportunities. Second. I have a motion, motion and second. Is there any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> That brings us to item number seven on the agenda, and this is the uh, possible unified development ordinance text amendment for amendments relating to utility pond fencing. And Ryan King will be, will be handling this. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Uh, thank you. Tonight, we would like to discuss, um, let's get to, let me get through here first. Here we go some uh, potential unified development ordinance text amendment. Uh, as the mayor and council may recall, you know, we've kind of jockeyed around with this since 1998. Back in 98, council um, approved a fence and landscaping requirement for retention detention ponds, which included the amortization, which required that all developments in 2003 have full compliance. Back in 2011, we kind of split the ponds out between a utility and an amenity. And with the utility, a fence would be required. And with the amenity, we wanted it to have no fence. So a fence was prohibited and we wanted it to kind of be more beautified. Those would be the ones that were closer to the streets. And then back in 2020, we revised the code to allow a decorative fence to be installed, which was an option. We had heard from several developers that there were some liability concerns that they wanted to fence it. And uh, we basically came up with some standards that you can see here on the screen before you. And then we actually have two Jacksonville examples. This is the Sandy Run Missionary Church and they've taken advantage of the um, decorative fence standard as well as the Walmart neighborhood market. So what we wanted to talk to you this evening about is to discuss the fence requirements for utility ponds and possible conflicts with North Carolina General Statutes. We're in the process of researching that to make sure that our unified development ordinance doesn't have something that is in conflict, but planning staff would like to get out of the requirement business in general. Um, we want to basically make it up to the development community with the caveat that if they want to install a fence that they utilize that decorative option. So what we would like to discuss with council tonight is does council concur with eliminating the fence requirement? Um, would the steeper slope requirements play into that decision? Because that's one of the things that we're looking at with the the state's requirements. Right now we have a 10 to one, which is a lower slope than the three to one. If we're not able to require that 10 to one, then maybe council says, well, because of that steeper slope, we want to continue to require the fence. Um, the secondary component would be, okay, if we're gonna make it optional, require that it be decorative. And that way the only fence that goes up would be a decorative fence. We believe that those decorative fence are a little bit more expensive than the black or green vinyl coated fence, but we're saying, hey, it's not required, but if you put it up, we want it to look a certain way. 
And then if we decide to go in that direction, we want to find out what do we do about existing fences. And what I mean by that is, let's use the, the Ruby Tuesdays example. They just completely demolished that site. They're going to redevelop it. I would envision that we would want to have compliance under a situation like that, where they're developing the, the site starting over from scratch. But if you have a situation where one of these existing fences is in place and they just need to repair it or take it down and replace it, not associated with a redevelopment that they would be allowed to continue to use that black or green vinyl coated fence. But that would be a question for council on which direction do we want to go. And then if we bring this forward, if council um, provides us with direction tonight, or if you want to sleep on it, we'll bring it up again. Um, basically, we want to review to make sure there's no conflicts so that we are not requiring something that we're not allowed to do. So uh, open it up for discussion to kind of just get a feel for kind of council's thoughts. I know that in this kind of setting, you know, usually we're in A and B where it's kind of a little bit more open dialogue. I'd, I'd like to see that tonight, even though we're kind of in the more formal setting, but just looking for some direction, kind of thoughts, you know, we um, kind of going about it the right way, or would you like to see us go in a different direction? How much, obviously the decorative fence would be a little more costly than some of the other options that have been used. How much feedback have you guys seen coming back from contractors and developers when they hear that is the requirement? Is it a big sticking point or, or have you not heard a lot about it? We have not. I believe there's three examples that come to my, you know, off the top of my head was the Sandy Run Church. That was one where a fence was not required, but they wanted to put it in. So they followed the, the decorative requirement. Um, the Walmart neighborhood market, they installed a fence. They were in violation. And we said, look, you can't have it. And actually, they're part of the reason why we made the change back in 2020. So they took that black vinyl coated fence down and installed the decorative type. And then River of Life Church did a partial fence. They wanted it closest to where the parking lot is. That way, if a, if a young child got out of the car and ran towards the water, there was that barrier, but it doesn't go all the way around. So those are really, I think, the only three that we've seen, and, and we haven't heard a whole lot of feedback other than, I believe they are more costly, but in terms of per linear foot, I don't know what that dollar amount is. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I certainly don't agree with adding, you know, extra expense, you know, that may halt development or slow development down or somebody's decision to develop in our area, but, uh, and also their safety. Uh, I think there's a certain degree of safety there you know, with the fencing, uh, like you say, a kid might break, a child might break loose and end up in the pond. Uh, so how deep are they usually? I mean, they vary in depth. They do. Okay. We actually had people drive into the ponds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they start living in the ponds and yeah. alligators. Mm -hmm. and so we forth. got an alligator in the yeah. pond at, uh, out of JCC out there now. Yeah. It's taking up residence. So, uh, matter of fact, when I talked to them, uh, North Carolina uh, wildlife marine biologist, he says anywhere that you have a pond, you can have an alligator. So, because they do have, have a way of finding their way to these areas. But again, you want your town to look nice. You don't want things to look real scraggly, but you got you got to weigh a whole lot of things here. So, just my, my scattered thoughts there on it. Fences, you know, add a good safety barrier, especially when you're dealing with children. But if that's at the discretion of the developer, then the developer and the owner of the property, you know, would be obviously concerned with that liability as well. So in many cases, they're going to want to do the same thing. So it may not necessarily need to be a requirement because anyone who's developing property and knows liability would be cognizant of that. I'm sorry. Can you require it in certain areas of a development? Like if it's in a high traffic area where there could be a lot of kids, like say near a park or something of that nature, or maybe if it was an apartment complex where it's in the very back behind out of the way, maybe not. Is there, can you dictate it that way or no? That's certainly an option. We haven't looked at it from that standpoint. Back mm -hmm. in 98, council pretty much said that we wanted them all fenced and, and landscaped. And then back in, like I said, 2011, we kind of created two standards to eliminate the fence from being required if it was an amenity out near the street. Um, I mean, you can certainly see here on Long Carolina, Carolina Forest Boulevard, having that decorative fence looks nicer than, than something else and the same thing with Sandy Run. Um, but it also sounds like there may be a desire to keep what we have and really not make any changes from 
Yeah. Well, I think most developers, if they're going to be in a high traffic area, they're going to probably want the nicer look anyway. So they'll probably go to decorative fence, you know, just because that's what they, the look they're going for. But maybe an apartment setting where it's out of the way, they might just go to chain link. Now, wood's not possible at all, right? Is that correct? Because it is not possible at this time. Okay. I mean, I, I don't think it should be at all because half time wood fences will fall apart and then people just don't repair them. So I just want to make, I didn't know if that was a thing or not. So. It's not actually the Walmart example. The reason why Walmart was eager in heaven and they installed a fence contrary to our code was because there was a bus stop right there for the apartment complex. So they kind of said, well, we'll we're going to install it. And then we worked with them on coming up with a solution. And that's when we came in with the decorative standard. And that's why they took it down and, and rebuilt it because it's that important to them. I think the biggest thing is staff standpoint is get out of the requirement built business. We certainly can, but get out of that and let the developer choose, but then make it be a decorative standard. But there's certainly thoughts yeah. to consider on both sides. Yeah, certainly. I kind of like the decorative standard personally. I agree with that too because if you leave it up to developer, developer A might be cheap and he might go with the cheapest route possible. Developer B might want to you know make it look and they're say their properties are side by side and then I mean that might convict. I mean I'd rather just set one one way and just stick with it. And if we're trying to make the town and everything look better, I would I would say even though it's a little bit higher cost, I mean it, I'd just say the decorative might be a little better route to go personally. any examples from other municipalities that we can compare and contrast I mean we pulled this isn't detention ponds but we pulled this this is not Jacksonville um, back when we made the revisions before um, we certainly can get those examples but I think you'll find that they vary from nothing at all I mean look at um, Waterford of the Commons I believe is the name of the development in, Le in Leland North Carolina you know Florida everybody's on lakefront property there's no fences up to you know, completely blocking it out to where nobody can access it with fences and landscaping, similar to what we've done in the years, mm -hmm. versus making it an attractive component of the development. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think you'll find that it, it varies depending on you know, the municipality and the concerns. But that's something we can, we can certainly look into if you'd like. I'm of the opinion that uh, the, the development community tells us when something's broken and we're not hearing back that anything's broken and I would be inclined to just continue what we have for the present time <clears throat> and, and until unless we get some, some feedback. I, I like the decorative fencing but I think requiring it is just adding additional costs to development here in Jacksonville that the county's not requiring. We've already had for years, we've been hearing how much difficult, how much more expensive it is to develop in Jacksonville compared to the county. I'd like to, you know, we, we tried a couple of years ago and removed some barriers to help lower the cost for developers to make it more attractive. And I, I definitely don't want to put more roadblocks in, in their way by requiring a decorative fencing, even though that might be my personal preference. but. I'd say it's not broke. Um, if the development community has a problem with it, they'll certainly, as, as you know, they've been vocal in the past and, and giving us feedback and telling us what they don't like. So if you're not hearing anything negative at this point, I'd, I'd say let's leave it. Before we, before we act on this, though, I would like to, to, to see what other communities are doing and, and compare so against what we're doing. This, this is uh, just a discussion item, no action, right? So we'll be happy yeah. to, to do some additional get research that to find out what other places and bring that back for another discussion. Right. I want to halfway dispel that whole thing that we're tougher to be built in. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and this proposal was kind of an in-between. Let's get out of requiring it, but if they decide to do it, make it nicer. So, I mean... I guess it really depends on whether you want to put the fence up or not. In, in some regards, hey, we're going to get out of requiring it. That would be a cost savings. But if you want to have it, then the cost would be more. So, gotcha. you know, I guess another option would be to, you know, don't require it and just let them put up the black or green vinyl coated fences. That's another option that we could look at. But we'll be happy to research what other communities are doing and get back with you. <clears throat> Any other thoughts that you'd like thoughts, to send questions? us? Yeah, looking after? Fine. Thank you, All right. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. All right. With that, uh, next item here is closed session. Uh, do the reports, Mayor, for the closed uh, session be at the end. I was following the uh, screen.
script here. Um, so we will start with the reports, and I guess I will start with Mr. Warden's end of the table. Well, I wasn't ready, um, but I don't have a report. I'm pre no, proud to be here, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I will just share a community event um, this Friday, September 23rd. Hispanic Heritage Month is being celebrated in the parking lot at Kimbrell's. It's an event that's a co-op from Diversity Council at the Chamber of Commerce and a few other vendors coming in. They're going to have some live music and food celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month from 2 to 7. So if anyone would like to attend that, that will be available Friday afternoon from 2 to 7. Thank you. Dr. Washington. Yes, I would like to report that on September the 7th, um, Major General Rodney Anderson, United States Army, retired, who is the chairman to the North Carolina Military Affairs um, Committee, paid a visit to me to Count Lejeune High School to come and visit out to our Dodea schools and to learn more about the school system and the quality of life of our military and their dependent children in the school system for Dodea. So, I gave him a nice tour and a visit. Um, the school was recently renovated at a cost of $40 million, so he was pleased with his visit. Very good. Mayor Tim, or Tim Butner. Discussion about the fund, I wasn't going to raise a question, but I think I will. Probably direct it to Mr. Carter. The city has one pond that I'm aware of yes. without fencing, yes. shrubbery around it. Where do we, where do we fall in this requirement? As far as fencing, that would be grandfathered in. It was not required at the time that pond. It was not required. Yes, that's correct. Okay, all right. And we affectionately refer to that as Lake Bittner. Lake Bittner. Safe. <laughs> so you do what you want to. Yeah, you put that child in. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackson. Yes, I had a. Uh, had a great experience at a place where you wouldn't think you would have a great experience. I actually visited Carteret Correctional Center earlier and sat down with the warden, uh, Embry L. Morton. And his approach to reintegration of inmates is amazing. And it's the environment. He, it, you could tell the difference when you walk into the building. And he treats the individuals with respect and uh, understand that one day these people will actually be your neighbors. So he's, I look forward to working with him as we move forward with um, re-entry and uh, the welcome home council. And um, like I said, it was, just, it was just an amazing experience. He has a real peaceful and loving heart. Like he says, he knows how to hit the switch if he needs to. But that's the switch that he, he, you know, he, he governs, but he starts off from a position of love. So I just appreciated that opportunity. Thank you. Oh, uh, the report. Happy to be here. Thank you. So now we will uh, have a motion to. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I keep forgetting everything. <laughs> I'm in a hurry to get into closed session. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the manager okay. has a report, and then I have a report, and then we have a one city moment that he'll describe for you. Thank you, Mayor. My report is I want to say thank you. Thank you for welcoming me at the beginning of the meeting, Mayor. Thank you to Council. We're very excited to be here in the community. A week and almost a half in, and the team has been fantastic. Those that are here apparently agree. Those that aren't here, maybe they didn't agree. Uh, just kidding. This is, it's been a good, strong start. Uh, and I'm excited to be a part of this team. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, about a month and a half ago, you asked me to, or I asked you to give me permission to get an appraisal on the Williamsburg Recreation Land. We had a party who was interested in that, and I told you at that time that there was a couple of considerations. One, the tax value was only $170,000, and that was for the 16 Point ninety nine acres. I also tell you one of the considerations was that it had a well site on that land, and so that would have to be cut out. The um, and there's another consideration I'll mention here in a moment. The appraisal has been done, and it, it, the, even cutting out the one acre, remaining the fifteen point ninety nine percent, the appraisal came back at four hundred thousand dollars. Now there would still have to be some consideration given one way or the other, because the, the if 
the water line would still have to be relocated at the city's expense or at the de developer's expense. But again, before I shared this with the developer who was interested, I wanted to share it with the council and let you know we did get it back. And uh, unless someone has an objection, I'll go ahead and share it with that interested party and see if they want to uh, look at an offer with those kind of considerations that still can be made because of that, the water line. You indicated that it was originally appraised at 170000 That was the tax value. The tax, oh, the tax yes, value. Yes, ma'am. Gotcha. There was never an appraisal gotcha. done on, on this, <laughs> to my knowledge, prior to this appraisal being done. Okay. Thanks, Mayor. I want to present our, our one city moment and see if this magically shows up. That's impressive right there. Uh, it's great to be able to be a part of the presentation and, and to stand here in front of council and our community to look at this moment. As I've said before, and I've mentioned over and over this week, uh, the one city, our city, my city is a phenomenal initiative by this community. And I think that it really gives us something to have pride in, and it gives us the opportunity to appreciate all the beautiful things that go on in our community. So this moment, look at that. Uh, this moment comes from the uh, Patriots Day ceremony 9-11. Uh, as you can see from the pictures that we have here, uh, this is presented, coordinated and presented by the Onslow County Civic Affairs Committee, of which Dr. Washington and Councilor Edwards are members and they serve on that committee. Uh, so thank you too for helping put this together. Uh, it's, it's events like this that we can always be proud of, and especially in our community. You'll notice in these pictures here, you see our uh, Parks Department team, part of Michael LaCorey's team, out making sure that the, the area is spruced up. Maybe we don't maintain it all the time, but when a special event comes up, I've learned that our team steps up to say, we're going to make it look as good as it needs to look to make Jacksonville uh, a place that people want to see. So that's fantastic. You'll also notice that our police, our fire, uh, the Marine Corps, the high school chorus groups, uh, the White Oak High School Chorus, Jacksonville High School Orchestra, the Marine Division Band, and then the Marines from Camp Johnson uh, were all present and accounted for during this ceremony. Um, you'll also notice through the pictures and the video that Lisa Miller and her media team they handled all the heavy lifting, just like they're doing right now. They're making sure that for those that can't be there, the story still gets out. And that's a, that's a value add for our community, which is phenomenal. You'll see, those are the people that could join. You'll recognize one of our own there in the picture. Uh, this is uh, a fantastic ceremony. Uh, there's Councilor Sosa, there's the chief. And for anyone that could be present for the ceremony, you know that the event was well put on and carried out in an excellent manner. So I look forward to the opportunity to be there next year and to be a, a participant in this awesome time. Uh, but it goes back to that concept, Mayor, that when given the opportunity to present our community, our city, the people that were involved were amazing. And I, and I look forward to, to what's going to happen tomorrow, look forward to what's going to happen in the next week so that we have more of these moments. And now to be a part of this team to, to make these presentations is fantastic. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you to the committee and for everyone involved to make that happen. Thank you. Everybody good? So we're, we're going to have a motion to go into closed session. Will somebody please make that motion? So moved. So moved. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay.